Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can practically evaluate the radio equipment performance in terms of total radiating power and uh, total isotropic sensitivity without going to an expensive anechoic chamber. And for that, I'm going to use uh, Reuden Schwartz CMW500 radio equipment testing device, otherwise also known as Callbox. So the Roden Schwartz CMW500 uh, radio communications tester is a platform that allows you to test the throughput and quality of radio signals of otherwise known as radio channels. To do that, you would need to insert a Roden Schwartz SIM card into your device and connect its input to the output of the module instead of using an antenna. And then you would be able to evaluate the bit error rate and uh, other parameters of the radio channel. In my previous video, I explained uh, when and where you have to do this kind of testing uh, and in what situations you don't have to do this testing. So, strictly speaking, in case of a telet modem, you don't really need to do this testing, but you may want to evaluate the TIS TRP performance. Um, basically, if you're using a different kind of antenna, so you just want to make sure it nothing wrong is with it. So this is the real purpose of this video, is to show you how you can do a sanity check of your radio equipment on a budget without doing expensive radio equipment testing in any coic chamber. So without further ado, let's uh, go back to the video that I've made earlier with a slightly longer hair uh, where I was using the CMW500 radio equipment tester. For the purposes of this video, we're going to use Roden Schwartz CMW500 Wideband Radio Communications Tester. This is a very expensive piece of equipment which is ideally suited for LTE testing, 5G testing and all kinds of radio communications testing in fact. You've got the option to connect multiple ports but they also have common ports which can be used to test both TRP and TIS at the same time. By default, Roden Schwartz will load up in this screen and uh, we're going to need to connect our piece of equipment which for the purposes of this video is going to be a Telet 4G modem mounted into a 6 fab base hat PCB. This is a very neat uh, PCB that's available from a third party resource that's been originally designed for integration into Raspberry Pi. Um, so you can use it for any kind of DIY uh, purposes. Very important for the purposes of this testing is the SIM card by Roden Schwartz and uh, I'm going to need a SIM card adapter to mount it into the Telet modem or rather in fact I'm going to mount into a 6 pub PCB so it's going to go like this hopefully right and now I can plug it in. So what I'm holding here is uh, two pieces of cable. First, I need a ref cable to plug into the common port on CMW. And secondly, I'm going to need UFL cable to the SMA sort of port connect with uh, SMA connector. And I'm going to plug it on one side into the CMW500 and on another side into the main antenna on the Telet modem. And once it's in, it will make a little click. So you can you can tell it's in. Let's get it a bit out of the way so that it doesn't. cause any issues. Now I've literally got a pretty printed piece of plastic just to hold it in place. 
So now I can plug it into the USB port on uh, Roden Schwartz to power it in. Very funny, Roden Schwartz have the USB ports upside down. By default, Roden Schwartz will come up in this window and you will get uh, LTX transmit measurements and LTX receive measurements. But before we can do that, we need to connect to our device. So to test this device, we're going to select band 3, which is a typical European band, and you want to lower down your received power to a sensible level, where you can actually receive communication from a device. Bear in mind, the actual TIS value that we're going to record is going to be this number, the one in grey, and not the one in black. Another important factor to select is the cell bandwidth, which is, means how much the signal is spreading left and right. Um, typically, I tend to use 5 MHz, because it gives a pretty decent narrow bandwidth. So once we're ready, we have to click this button, which does on or off. And now you can see that the cell started looking for the uh, for the device. Well, rather than Schwartz. It might take some time. We have the light on. That's a good sign. And it seems to be connected and attached. Uh, once you want to make sure, once that happened, you click connect again. And this is now fully connected. Um, so we can now do our first transmit measurement. And um, this is going to be the transmit power measurement. Um, once again, once we set up this window, we just want to click uh, Start. Uh, and this is giving us the transmit power of the device. You have quite a lot of different settings here. but we're not going to uh, play with them too much. Okay. As you can see, the device is working relatively well, and it's giving us the transmit power, the actual one we care about is 20.5 dBm, uh, which is uh, typically uh, so it, it's normal for this device, and that means with the actual antenna we're not going to exceed that. The limits, according to Etsy standards, are in fact 23 dBm, uh, but modern manufacturers would typically set them slightly lower, just in case. Then, we can measure TIS by running Rx analysis, and to do that, we're going to run bit error rate. Um, so you can see that bit error rate is 0% in this communication. That means this is happening at minus 84 dBm. So our TIS is better than that, meaning that we can lower it down. Let's lower it down to minus 90 dBm, and we're going to repeat the test. And the bit error rate is still zero. Effectively, you're going to lower it down to the point where it starts causing errors. And this is what we're really doing here. Oh, there you go. Now we can see that the bit error rate is 80%. This is not good. So we're going to lower it down back to minus 99. At this point it's still quite high up. There you go. The other thing worth mentioning, that a resource block gives its highest value at um, when it's set to 1. 
And this is typically what we use in TRP and TRS measurements. So we can start seeing that at minus 99 dBm, bit error rate begins to increase and uh, it, it's, it stops being just 0%. Typically the acceptable bit error rate would be around 5%. So we can see that for this band, uh, TIS is going to be minus 99.5 dB. Once you've done that, you may want to move your channel uh, to a different bandwidth because at the moment we're going in the middle in the mid band so you may want to repeat this kind of measurement for 10 megahertz bandwidth and restart and typically you will find that this is slightly worse because now we are considering wider frequency range and we can s receive more noise basically Narrow range gives us better numbers. So as you can see, at 10 MHz bandwidth, our TIS value is only minus 97 dB. And we already can see that there is going to be an increase in bit error rate. You may want to change to a different band, for example, another band that's supported by this device is band 20. This is a bit low. Um, and um, we're going to have to wait for the device to connect again, um, which you may want to have to restart it. And then we're going to repeat the measurements. And then we have a look at tr transmit power and received input sensitivity. So this is about as much as we can do in this sort of setup without going to any coic chamber and using real antennas. We're going to do exactly that next and I'll show you how this is done. But this is basically the purpose of what we've done just now is to verify the performance of the modem because if you don't have a good TIS performance on the modem itself, you're not going to get it in any coic chamber either. So effectively what we've just done is we measured the output power from the TELET modem into the CMW500. Otherwise, I can say we have done conducted power measurement. And we can call this measurement TRP or EIRP, it doesn't really matter because what we are actually measuring is just the power going down the wire minus its losses, obviously. This task might seem trivial, but in actual fact, testing in RF anechoic chamber typically costs between five to ten thousand dollars, and if you bring a modem that doesn't work, then it's all on you and you will not get the money back. So think twice about it and whether or not you need to check the modem. So after we've done that, the next logical step is to actually attach antennas to this modem and repeat the test that we've just done, but this time with antennas. In order to keep this video series relatively short, I decided to break the series in two. So this is going to be the end of this video and I'm going to shortly release a new video which will show you how to do uh, spherical measurements for antenna uh, evaluation.